a big topic. It's super important. Causing um, short-term relief, but long-term leave a long-term consequence. Then this video is for you. I just did a meditation today called "Befriending the Hungry Ghost: Healing Addiction and Reclaiming Your Whole Self." And what I wanted to do is just share the highlights from that meditation and Dharma talk that you can find here on YouTube. So if you like this, um, if you like this video, then you'll definitely want to check out the video that's called um, Befriending the Hungry Ghost, and it's the meditation and the Dharma talks. We go a little bit deeper in that one. but So I just want to share three essential pieces of healing addiction. And I talk about what's the hungry ghost? You know, what is the hungry ghost? Let's unpack that first. In Buddhist uh, philosophy and teaching, there are... Um, hungry ghosts, which are these beings that have big bellies and little mouths, and they represent an aspect of our inner experience that craves, that can never be satiated or satisfied. So no matter how much food the hungry ghost goes to put in their mouth, they can never satisfy their big swollen bellies because their mouths are too small. And this points to an aspect of our humanity, this fact that we crave and we look outside of ourselves for what can complete us, for what can fill the hole in the soul. And what we learn on our journey through addiction, through using things like I used to use wine, right? There was a time in my life when I was drinking more than a bottle of wine every day and I graduated to putting vodka in my juice glass and no one would know that I was imbibing. And I was a spiritual practitioner. I was a meditator. I was a yoga teacher. And I had this, this part of me that I hid. And I knew there was something, I knew, I knew it had me. But it wasn't until I, I, I inclined towards these three things that I was able to heal that addiction. And I haven't had a drink for six years and I'm not, against drinking or against really anything at all. You know, if, if something improves the quality of your life, then great. But if something is causing long-term long consequence, then it's something that we need to address and look at. So um, craving, right? Craving, we all, we all have different types of craving. Some of us craves, boot, crave booze. Some of us crave other mood-altering, mind-altering substances. Um, some of us crave shopping, porn, TV, gossip, needing validation from social media. So these are all examples of addictions. All of these behaviors, when they are overused, when they're overdone, they will have long-term, they do have long-term consequence. Short-term relief, but long-term consequence. So the first Thing I want you to keep in mind when healing addiction is compassion. Com I say that so I just kind of said it lightly and I, I don't want it to land, I want it to land deeply. Without compassion, we will be ashamed and we will continue to hide and we won't have the fortitude, the inner strength to do the hard work of shifting habits and patterns. So we have to understand that all humans have this aspect to themselves. We all, we all crave, we all kind of will lean into craving and we get confused and we think that this thing, this drink, this video, this um, product will fill the hole in the soul. But what we have to understand is that there is nothing external that will fill the whole and the soul, nothing. It's an illusion, it's a lie. And yet we all get caught in it. And so addiction is really a deep, deep desire to meet a need. And oftentimes that need is for connection. And so when we get that it's not about the thing that we use, it's actually about meeting a need. And if we can know and, and learn to meet that need, 
then breaking bad habits becomes easier. So compassion is essential. Realize that you're just trying to meet a need that hasn't been met. It may be the need for connection, connection with others, to be, be all of who you are, to be authentically you, and feel like you're loved and accepted for who you are. And so that could be the need, or there might be some other need that you're trying to meet through this behavior, through, through the habit. And so understand that that's actually what we want to focus on. And there's no reason to harbor, is, to harbor um, shame or to beat yourself up for trying to meet your needs, even when they're in unhealthy ways and you know better. Number one is compassion and forgiveness, okay? Once you extend compassion and forgiveness to yourself and you really understand that the, the desire to meet needs is really innocent, then we can, um, you know, sense what we have to gain by giving up the behavior or the addiction. Um, oftentimes what we get focused on is what we'll lose. And so it's really important to look at, okay, what is there to gain? For me, when I'm, when I'm using the wine example, when I thought about quitting, I would think, oh, all my fun is gone. You know, I'm a mom. And so I would be like, well, what's going to be my relief at the end of the day? You know, like it was like taking, it felt very um, penalizing or penalizing. Or my birthday, what am I going to do for my birthday? How am I going to have fun without booze? You know, <laughs> like, what the hell? So have to lose. What's really helpful is to incline the mind with intention towards, okay, make a list. What do I have to gain? Oh, wow. Well, what I have to gain is lightness. Like I was getting kind of puffy from the inflammation. So honestly, I'll probably lose a few pounds when I quit drinking or I decrease my drinking because at first I started by decreasing my drinking and now I just don't drink at all. I don't really, I don't have the need for it. Um, and I haven't for six years. So uh, notice what you have to gain. I knew I had to gain my energy again because every day I was waking up with anything from a slight to a big hangover. Um, so stack up what you have to gain. And that's really important to inspire you and to help motivate you and to help you see the whole picture uh, rather than what fear wants you to see. And then the third thing is just honesty, self-honesty. We can't have this without compassion, but once we have compassion, we can be really honest. And like for me, it was like, wow, this behavior is taking a toll. So whatever this is, it's having long-term consequence. It has a consequence on you and your loved ones. My drinking was having an impact on my kids and my marriage, my work. When I got really honest with that, that was the biggest game changer for me because I was in so much denial. I was like believing that it wasn't making an impact. But luckily I had some brave people in my life who were honest with me about the impact. One of them was my husband and, and that was um, the biggest motivation to change. Side note, if you, someone you love is struggling with addiction, share the impact with them. They're not too delicate to hear it and it might be exactly what they need to hear. So, um, let them know what the effects of their behavior is having on you. And uh, when my husband did, wow, it was like, I'll never forget that day. And everything changed after that. And so those are the three essential points and pieces. And then the last thing, actually, I said three, but I'm going to share four. <laughs> uh, start to get curious about the craving rather than focusing on. Often we bypass, we miss the uh the 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 feelings of craving in the body and by the time we're engaging in whatever the behavior is that's gonna bring us relief we missed we missed the um yeah the very beginnings of that sense in the body it's craving like for me it was like i could feel a pull you know towards going and getting a glass of wine when i would get home from work and that craving would actually start before I got home and I would notice myself thinking about it on the drive home, yeah? So rather than being unconscious about all those signs and signals, 
get conscious of them. So I started being really mindful. That's why mindfulness is so important and aware of like, oh, I'm starting to crave, I'm starting to crave, you know, this, this, you know, glass of wine. And you don't have to change the behavior. You can give yourself permission to indulge in the behavior. If you like, that's fine. Make it more of a goal for you to get better acquainted with that sense in your body and, and learn to tolerate it. And even, you know, so I would start to be like, okay, I'm gonna wait a half an hour. I'll pour my first glass in a half an hour, right? So I started playing with what it was like to tolerate and track the uh, craving in my body and my mind and holding space and bringing compassion and breathing. And then if I wanted to have my drink, I could. But um, what we tend to see is what I saw and what my clients see when they do this and they track and they tolerate their craving is it, it tends to shift it over time. And it becomes harder and harder to harm, to do self-harm to the self, um, to do harm to the self when you're wide awake, when you're like being super honest with yourself about what it is that you're doing. And so I hope this helps you. Do let me know what about this video helped you. And um, do me a favor, if you are not subscribed to this channel, click the button that says subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Sending you so much love and many blessings. Namaste.